Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today. You're watching The Finest Women in Real Estate. I'm your host, Jeff Kroom. Now, this show is all about having real conversations with real people who have done extremely well in their life and business. They're in studio today sharing with us their expertise. First of all, we'd like to welcome Miss Jackie Wilhoyt. Jackie is a real estate agent and engineer. We're going to learn a little bit more about that a seasoned San Diego-based realtor with EXP Realty. Jackie, right. welcome to the program. Thank you. And beside Jackie, we are welcome to have Shelly Ruffin. Shelly, wow, we're going to talk about her energy. We're going to talk about her passion. And one of her expertises is college planning, right? So okay. we're very interested in hearing more about you, more about college planning. She's a radio host. She's a, a TV host. Lots of other things that are coming from her. Welcome to the show, Shelly. Thank you. And lastly, we're very uh, honored to have Jason Jordan. Um, Jason is a business professional, professional speaker, right? Uh, Toastmaster, I understand. Sure. And uh, probably we'll learn a little bit more about where all of those speaking skills came from. Right. And with a very unique um, spin on finding your why, which is going to lead to telling stories, right? Absolutely. So all three of you, we're just going to kind of settle in and take a deep breath and have a great conversation and learn more about you. And we want to keep our viewing audience in mind. We want them to be able to walk away with one or two things that they can apply to their lives and their businesses to help take them to the next level, okay? So Jackie, let's start with you. First of all, real estate agent. What prompted you to get into the real estate business? Uh, my family's been in the real estate business my whole life, and so it's just it was just natural for me to go from engineering to real estate, and I, I'm passionate about selling homes and helping people find what they want out of life. Sure. Now, I understand that you uh, specialize in, in basically upscale homes, luxury homes, right? In right. the um, Del Mar and Point Loma. Point Loma area, right? What drew you to specifically luxury homes, right? I like luxury homes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good, good answer. Good answer. Me too. Good. And good. Your choice. Eh? Yeah. If you had yeah. your choice, we'll we'll we'll, yeah. we'll go for the luxury. But now, one of the things I was reading online about you and learning a little bit about your story. First of all, I'm fascinated the fact with engineering. Now, I have to say, when I first was reading your information, when I heard engineering, I was thinking about construction, right? How to build a house. But that's not your engineering background. Tell our viewing audience a little bit about your engineering background and how that's played a role in your success as a real estate agent. Okay, so I um, graduated with a chemical physics engineering degree and I took that degree and started doing more civil engineering with um, mass transit companies. So I'm, it was construction engineering and we would design and build trolley lines throughout the U.S. and Canada now. and. Um, my last project was actually the one that's going from downtown here up to UTC. That was wow. my last design project. So, yeah, I decided I did that for 12 years and then decided I needed a vacation and never went back. <laughs> you know, it, very interesting. So. <laughs> you, you know, the show is called The Finest Women in Real Estate, right? And, of course, I'm not a woman, so I don't know what it comes from that perspective. Help our viewers maybe understand a, a challenge that you faced going down the civil engineer path, then transitioning to the real estate. What, what did you specifically run up against as a female, as a woman in that industry? Anything that you could think of? Yeah, it's definitely a very male predominant. Mm. Like it's, um, they don't take you, well, back when I was doing it, they didn't take women as serious in the beginning. But then more and more women started entering the field and um, it, it actually worked to my advantage more than having challenges because I could be like the face. I could be the face of the company, and I could yeah. go and um, win the projects for the the company. And um, it wasn't your guy in his dirty boots and yeah. torn up jeans. So, <laughs> so it's a different image, right? Yeah, You're projecting exactly. an entirely different image. Um, lastly, kind of before we move on. How, how long did it take for one of those the, the civil engineering projects that you're working on? How long did it take to go kind of from start to finish? Um, it all depends. So there are some jobs that take a year, and then there are some jobs that take eight years. So I, in the 12 years that I did it, um, I finished seven projects. So And they were all over the country, and it just it all depends on what the um, transit authority needs. And, and then that's it. Yeah. You and I talked a little bit off camera, and we were talking about uh, depth, 
right? We're talking about a lot of who we are as individuals is, is below the surface. It's like the, the, um, the roots of a tree go down deep. So uh, now, now are you still using the civil engineering skills that you have in the real estate business? Yes and no. Um, I know a lot about uh, foundation issues. I know a lot about um, crack slabs, like just different things that um, it's really good for my clients. However, because of legality and different things, it, we're, California is such a um, litigious state yeah. that yeah. I kind of have to bite my tongue and just hopefully guide them in the right direction. But I can't really give that much advice, but it, it does help. I, I love something that I read on your website, and, and it says, because you were so incredibly well-versed in the area's housing market, you're always managing to find your clients that hidden gem that other agents tend to overlook. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you're going the extra mile to help your clients, yeah, I right? Knock. I do anything that my clients need. If there's a house they want to buy and it's not for sale, I'll go and knock on the door and court the owner until he wants to sell it. Ex court the owner until you court the owner <laughs> until he wants to yeah, sell right. it. I, I, I love it. Now, now we're going to talk a little bit more when we come back. But, but uh, before we leave, um, tell us a little bit about this word transparency because we talked about it's one of the, the fundamental principles that you've built your business on about being transparent with your clients. What does that mean to you to be transparent? I want my clients to be happy when they um, move into a new house. So some people think, oh, I want to live in. Pacific Beach. I want my client to know everything about Pacific Beach. I want them to know who their neighbors are before they're getting into it, and um, I don't want I don't want them to live somewhere that they're not happy living. Yeah, so. we talked a little bit about that, and we'll we'll get back to this a little bit more. But we talked about that about can you imagine the real estate agent right that is showing you the home, and you go in and they say, oh, this is a lovely home, but. Uh, George next door has a barking dog. Mary on the other side of that throws parties. That's what we were talking about being mm -hmm. transparent. You're that transparent. You know your real estate market that well that you're helping their, your buyer know what's around them before they move in, right? Correct. Yeah, because we've all, we've all had that experience where the U-Haul's there, it's unpacked, you're in, and before the evening ends, you've got the barking dog next door, the party on the hill, um, and you're going, oh my God, I've already closed, right? So now what are my options? So brilliant of you to share. We're glad that you are on the program. Well, listen, so what makes a luxury home real estate agent decide she wants to go into the entertainment business? Stay with us. We'll find out more when we return. these hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden hose defense. Next, a thorough stir. Then, another spray. And finally, feeling if the ashes are cool. Oh, yeah. ah, yes, the selfie. A ritual practice so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. Well, welcome back, everybody. You're watching The Finest Women in Real Estate. I'm your host, Jeff Kroom, and we are in studio with uh, Jackie Wilhoyt. We're in studio with Shelly Ruffin and Jason Jordan. So first of all, Shelly, tell us a little bit about you. Now, I understand you are um, in the college funding. It is not just a business for you. It, it is your passion, it's right? Passion. Tell us a little bit more so our viewers understand what it is that you do. Okay. So as a college planning expert, for this is my 26th year in the business, wow. um, raising three children along the way, which are 28, 26, and 18, and married 31 years as of tomorrow, um, and two businesses. I have the Edfin College Planning and yes. the Edfin Cash for College, and then the Edfin TV radio show, and then a published author of the College Bound 101 book. Yeah. So what brought me to all this yes. is just kind of... Um, I've always had that love for education. Don't know where it came from. Hmm. I really don't know, but it's there. 
always seeking self-development, self-improvement, um, and then along the way, getting my degrees. Um, I have two masters and finishing up my PhD in psychology. But um, just really busy and just love to learn. And at the same time, my I was 15 years working for colleges. My last position was a director of financial aid and scholarships. So okay. I got to go to high schools and see all that. But yeah, just... I love it. I just, yeah. you either do or you, you don't. You can tell. Now, I heard just recently, I heard that you fell, you broke your wrist, yeah. you were in the hospital yeah. or whatever, and then you were yeah. laying around forever, but you're not laying around forever. No. You were out doing what? Hiking? So you're not you're hiking. I'm busy doing college planning right now. <laughs> well, I'm on the set right now, but. <laughs> so, but. But you don't stop. You're like the Energizer Bunny, right? That keeps going and going and going. How do you, how do you keep that high energy up? How do you manage The way that? I look at it is, my name is Shelly, and it kind of goes with the responsibility of the name. I don't, you know, it's just, I just have that. Wow. Everybody, you, it's just, you, it's a choice. It's yeah. a choice. And, and with that choice, it's like when you wake up, it's like you can choose to eat Skittles for breakfast, or you can eat something that's going to give you that energy that you need. I mean, there's all these things that have to go with it. And, and having those daily habits of exercise and being good to yourself and being good to others and the whole gratitude thing, it kind of, it's, it's a recipe. Now, I know yeah. somebody who is watching is looking at you going, she can't possibly be that excited, that energetic all the time. Now, tell us the <laughs> truth. Are you this way all the time? I'm going to tell you someone, and I was in my Riverside office. I had the lady there, the manager up there, and she walks down the hall and she says, is she really like this all the time? <laughs> <laughs> and my assistant said, yeah, she kind of is. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, she's like this all the time. I mean, I'm not like that. all. I do have downtime because you have to replenish yeah. your soul sure. to be able to give more out. Sure. Just like when I get at home at the end of the day, every day now, and I'm completely exhausted and I probably haven't eaten as good as I probably should. Um, and then that's when my husband says, hey, are you hungry? And I'm like, shit, cook me something <laughs> real quick. You know? I heard yeah. uh, my mentor from a long time ago, Jim Rohn, uh, Jim Rohn said something. He said, if you ever want to get something done, give it to a busy person. Because a busy person will know they how will to get, get it, it done. done. Now, yes. we have just a couple of more minutes with a uh, question I want to ask you. I'm a father of two, two girls that are off in college. My one daughter is um, going to UC uh, San Diego here in the fall. Tell me as a father and, and other fathers, parents who are watching, tell us how you can help us when it comes to uh, college funds to help our kids go to college. Help us. So the difference with other college um, consultants and myself is they specialize that they may be like an insurance agent or a financial advisor. You know, they all have the, you know, extra programs that they offer. I'm a college planning expert. I don't do insurance. I'm not a financial yeah. advisor. That's all I do. Yeah. Um, so the full program is I'm huge on getting kids starting as early as, believe it or not, middle school. Middle school? It's middle school. Planning for college in middle My school. My youngest kids are eighth graders. I'm, These days. I'm way behind. Eighth graders. <laughs> and so they start with me with a mentoring coaching program. The reason why I start them as early as middle school, so when they get to high school, the self-esteem, yeah. the self-awareness, self-efficacy, all that is already planted. Yeah. And they just, and grades, the study skills, all that's planted and they're ready to so if our viewers have, so if you're at home watching today and you're looking to have somebody help you uh, plan for college, I know I've gotten my second daughter off to college and I didn't know what I was doing. I started from scratch and my wife and I were fighting all the way through it because it can be a tedious thing figuring out how you're going to plan it. But if you need help, that's why Shelly is here. Shelly, thank you so much for being here. You, you bring a lot of value to the program. we still got to talk about the Energizer Bunny stuff. So we've got to learn more about you. But <laughs> you have to have that to keep going. you gotta, you got to have it. Now, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> next on our program, he's in studio with us, is Jason Jordan. Um, he believes in the power of telling stories, and so much so, he's dedicated his entire career to helping people discover and share what he calls fire stories. Right. Jason, how did you come up with this fire story? Tell us about that. It's a, it's a great question. I am a big fan of Simon Sinek, as I believe yeah. you are. Yes. I was really moved by his TED Talk, which was all about starting with why. Mm -hmm. It was the golden circle. If you haven't seen it, you need to watch it. And I was very moved and inspired by it, but I started thinking, well, where does the why come from? Like, how did we get there? Is it manufactured? I, I can picture corporations getting together in a boardroom and let's brainstorm our why. Mm. And it really doesn't happen like that. The why comes from our experience. It comes mm. from these moments that I call the fire story where it, you just hit this point where life can't be the same anymore. Mm. And people start businesses, they start careers, they start movements based on these fire stories. 
And it's, it's not about a balance sheet. It's, it's about a belief. Mm. Something mm. that, that like comes that. from deep inside. Because let's face it, I like that. starting your own business is hard. It's time consuming. It's risky. Most small businesses fail. So why do we do it? It's because of something we believe. So what was it in your life, if you can share with us, Jason, that caused you to believe? What, what happened significantly? We got just a couple of minutes before we go to break, but take us there, would you? What's your story? Absolutely. My, for me, I've been a professional speaker for about a decade now. I used to specialize in generations, millennials, mm. Gen X, mm. uh, baby boomers, etc. And what I came to realize was what means things to people, it really comes from the stories that we hear. And in this world where we're just overwhelmed with data, I mean, mm. you can find data on anything that you want. If you want to believe that the earth is flat, you can believe that and find lots of data on it. Sure, sure. But it's all about the stories that we tell if you really want to move people and influence people. And that's what I teach. Yeah, I think in the personal development space, we call it critical mass, right? An idea whose time has come. We just wake up one moment and we go, I can't do this anymore. It, it is, it, it's got to be the pivotal point of most people successful is that story, is that turning point. And that's what you help your clients do, I understand. You help them identify their own story, right? So when we come back, I'd like to talk a little bit more. Maybe you can take us through one or two steps that we could start finding our own story and our viewers could find their stories. So today we're in studio and we are talking to an entertainment guru, a real estate agent. We are talking to a college planner. Energizer Bunny, who just does not stop. <laughs> we are talking to somebody who is branded Fire Story. We'll be back and learn more from our special guest. practice so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. Well, welcome back, everybody. You're watching The Finest Women in Real Estate. We are in studio with three amazing professionals. And when we left you, we were talking about how to identify your story. Jason, quickly take us and our viewing audience to how they identify their story. So I would say anybody in their career who's trying to find their passion, who's mm -hmm. trying to find their why, mm -hmm. uh, most of the time people start with what they think other people want to hear. You should ignore that. You should start with really... What drove you to do what you do? And it's those moments in your life of, of exquisite pleasure and great pain mm. that really made the difference. And dig deep into those. And it's a skill. You have to practice telling them. And, and it'll open you up the more that you do it. Yeah. And that will be your why. And that will be what draws the right kind of people to you. Excellently said. And, and Shelley, if somebody's watching today and they are at that beginning planning stages for college, what do you suggest they do first? I suggest that they call me at 951-261-9799. Can you say that again? 951-261-9799. We got College planning expert. Yeah. We got to start someplace. Do you only work with local kids or do you? I'm actually, as of this year, a global company. Oh, a global And I have company. another company in Orange County. I work with kids from Japan that are attending classes at SDSU, a full-blown internship. I have one that Super. was in France with... Um, uh, San Francisco State University. So, yeah, a little bit of everything. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, Jackie, you, we didn't get to talk much about the nightclub, but I know that's your next venture coming up. Tell us just 30 seconds. What's that all about? What can people expect? So, just like you were saying, you, like I, I feel like you're passionate about what you daydream about. And I mm. love parties, and I love throwing parties mainly. 
and it's always been a passion of mine. So I decided to just go for what I'm passionate about, and it's working out. So it's going to be a full, full blown, a full blown nightclub, like entertainment ultra club, lounge, ultra lounge, yeah, yeah, ultra lounge, sushi bar on yeah. one side. Yeah, it's going to be a really nice upscale. Does lounge. it have a name yet? Um, I'm working on that. I've gone through a few names. <laughs> Got to see it. Got to stay tuned. <laughs> Feeling good about ourselves. So important in what we're doing, right? Yeah. Feeling good about ourselves yeah. is so important as a speaker, as college planning, as an entrepreneur, um, real estate agent. Um, the, thing that, the thing that I want probably most for our viewers to understand is when you tune into the finest women in real estate, you're watching just people, just like you and I. We all started someplace. We started with a dream. And what we're hearing is that we have tapped into some supernatural, if you would, power that I believe resides in all of us. You're there watching. You're sitting on your couch. Maybe life isn't working for you. You need to understand that wherever you're at in your life, moment, this moment can be the turning moment in your life. You can figure out your why just starting today. You can start your college planning today. You can go from real estate agent, civil engineer, start your own nightclub. Friend, you're watching what is po possible for all humanity. So listen, my name is Jeff Kroom. I'm your host today. And don't let today go away. Don't let the sun go down today without you figuring out your why, without you making a fresh commitment to yourself and your future. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.